First, the Chinese government puts people's life first. In line with the overall prevention and control strategy of preventing case importation and domestic resurgence, we have implemented a dynamic zero-COVID strategy, which has effectively guaranteed the sustained and stable economic and social development of China and the health and safety of the people. The Beijing Winter Olympics and Paralympics will strictly implement the Chinese government's epidemic prevention principles and requirements and keep the bottom line of epidemic prevention and control in society. Second, the global COVID-19 pandemic, especially the spread of Omicron and other variants, has brought great uncertainty to the global COVID situation. During the Winter Olympic Games, a large number of people from different countries and regions will come to China, increasing the number of people gathered. And the occurrence of a certain number of positive cases will be highly likely to happen. In that context, we, together with the International Olympic Committee and International Paralympic Committee, have formulated and published the playbook. The epidemic prevention content in the playbook should first meet the needs of the Games and reflect the Games-centered, athlete-centered approach to ensure the normal operation of the competition. At the same time, it must comply with China's epidemic prevention and control principles. We hope that all stakeholders can strictly implement the protocols jointly respond to COVID-19 challenge. We need to make joint efforts to ensure the safety of all participants, the host city, and make it a safe and smooth game. Second, the process of compiling the playbook. The process can be divided into three phases. First is the independent preparation stage of Beijing Winter Olympic Organizing Committee. In the first half of this year, we started the compilation and to present on schedule a streamlined, safe and splendid game. We set the six principles of streamlined games, vaccination, closed loop management, effective response to emergencies, combining prevention and control, and taking a holistic and balanced approach. In mid-September, after several rounds of soliciting opinions, playbooks for six categories of stakeholders version of the Chinese side were submitted to the ROC to the ROC for review. The second phase was preparing the first edition of the playbook with the IOC. In early October, we had three video communications with IOC, discussed the timeline and framework of the playbook, agreed to streamline to two playbooks for athletes and team officials and other stakeholders and set the major principles of, stream of strengthening vaccination, pre-departure COVID prevention measures, closed loop management, NAT test and emergency disposal principles. Nine rounds of intensive consultations were held to discuss the text item by item and consensus was reached before it was released on October 25th. After the release, we held nine briefings for all stakeholders and all parties generally expressed their understanding and recognition for the playbook. In the recent international test events, we strictly followed the standards and requirements that will be adopted for the actual game, and the playbook and the measures have proven effective. Third, compiling the second edition with the IOC. Since November the 5th, we have held 14 consultation and review meetings with the IOC on the revision. While keeping the basic framework of the first edition, we have absorbed the opinions and suggestions of various stakeholders and taken into account issues discovered in the test events. As for the NAT processes and the list of destinations allowed and for asymptomatic, asymptomatic quarantine facilities and other details, we have made revisions to make this playbook more feasible. On December the 13th, the second edition of the playbook was officially released, followed by six briefings to respond to specific concerns of various stakeholders. Third, basic principles of the playbook. 
There are six principles in the playbook. First, vaccination. Vaccination is a key means to reduce the risk of infection and ensure safety. With the exception of a number of athletes and team officials who are exempted due to medical reasons, all Olympic-related personnel need to complete full vaccination at least 14 days before they come to China to be exempted from quarantine at designated facility and enter the closed loop. Given the complexity of the current COVID situation in the world, we especially recommend that all Olympic-related individuals to receive booster shots against COVID-19. Second, closed-loop management. Closed-loop management is a special management method. The Olympic-related individuals in the closed loop and the staff serving foreign visitors directly are required to undergo daily health monitoring and NAT and stay in the closed-loop hotels or the Winter Olympic villages. They are only allowed to take dedicated vehicles to and from closed-loop sites and are not allowed to meet people outside the loop, still less the general public. Third, establishing a COVID-19 liaison officer mechanism. All international organizations coming to Beijing for the Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games need to appoint a COVID-19 liaison officer. The responsibility of the officer is to maintain close contact with the members of their delegation, ensure that they understand the playbook, assist them in completing the preparations before coming to China, and carry out coordination work, for example, in epidemic emergency response. Fourth, test, trace and isolate principle. During the Games, people in the closed loop will receive NAT test daily. If test or retest positive, they will be quarantined or treated. Following the standards of epidemiological survey and close contact recognition in the playbook, we will trace the case, locate close contacts and take decisive measures to cut the chain of transmission. Fifth, reduce contact. In crowded spaces with poor ventilation, there is a greater risk of infection. The playbook stipulates that social activities should be minimized, masks should be worn at all times, and prolonged stay in confined spaces, crowds gathering, and close contact should be minimized. Sixth, raising awareness of hygiene. Olympic-related visitors to China need to wear N95, KN95, FFF, FFP2 masks without breathing valve or medical protective masks of the same standard throughout their stay in China. They need to wash their hands and disinfect frequently and use hand sanitizer. It is recommended to applaud for the athletes instead of singing and shouting. It is recommended to use less shared items or disinfect them before use. Rooms should be ventilated regularly to maintain good air circulation. Friends from the press. The Games is just around the corner. To control the pandemic and ensure the safety of the Games and personnel, we will do the following. First, we will step up publicity and training. We will ask IOC, IPC and National Olympic Committees to hold training sessions for COVID liaison officers and other Olympic-related individuals visiting China. We will also conduct training for Olympic-related staff in host cities so that they can master the protocols 